we saw this gap in the SMS space, which, which was the lack of human touch, the lack of the human element. Most of the tools even now are fully automated. They are becoming, you know, similar to chatbots. People are just talking to either no one is replying to them or they are talking to, to automation. And yeah, this is, uh, this is how we saw the conversational gap in the market. Hello and welcome to the Ecom Ops Podcast. We believe that there is more than enough content focused on e-commerce marketing and not enough content celebrating the real heroes of e-commerce, those running the operation. Each week, we find and interview an e-commerce operations expert to share the secrets behind how some of this industry's most exciting businesses are run. I'm your host, Norbert Strappler, the CEO of Sync Spider. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ecom Ops podcast. Today I'm talking to Lisa from cartloop.io. Hi Lisa, great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm more than happy. Again, a European company here. Um, and uh, yeah, we're talking about um, conversational text marketing uh, for e-commerce. Uh, before we start, Lisa, tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get started into e-commerce? Yes, of course. So I'm Lisa. I'm co-founder at Carlo. We are a conversational text marketing platform that helps e-commerce brands drive growth and build a community, uh, a text-based community, actually. We, we are a team of real people that uh, go above, above and beyond for customers in, in real time through text messaging. And previously, my, my background is pretty non stereotypical because I studied and graduated from med school. And while I was studying medicine, I built and sold um, two e-commerce brands. And then after that, I, I realized where my true passion uh, was and what I wanted to, to pursue. So I made a, a pivot in my career and I went all in with, with tech and co-founded Carlo. Oh, wow. So you are coming from the mad part. Yes. <laughs> That's really interesting. Very, very uh, completely different thing. Uh, which e-commerce uh, niches did you cover when you had your e-commerce solutions? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, which e-commerce stores did you run yourself before you started with uh, Cardu? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there were uh, a couple of e-commerce stores, uh, women's, women's activewear and then women's fashion on, on Shopify. We okay, were running them on Shopify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you really know everything about e-commerce? <laughs> I wouldn't say point. everything. I'm still learning every day. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, entire e-commerce um, um, yeah, story is changing nearly every day. So um, yeah. a lot of different things. Um, what was the impetus behind of the creation of Card Loop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, my my co-founder and I are, you know, ex-e-commerce operators. We we were running our own stores uh, a couple of years ago. So we've been through all the ups and downs that merchants go through. And one of the downs was relying on external marketing channels such as paid advertising. And part of the idea for Car Loop came when my, my co-founder and I used to get a lot of abandoned cards. And that was really frustrating for us. We, did, we, we just didn't realize what was the reason behind those abandoned cars. We thought everything was optimized and running, running perfectly. So what we did is we went through, we went on WhatsApp and we started texting our abandoned shoppers and we got a good reply rate. They really appreciated us reaching out. And that was one, one moment that we realized that this approach is actually working and we should dig, the, dig deeper into, into this approach. Then the other reason was in 2018, I believe, Facebook shut down all our Facebook uh, accounts, our business accounts, actually. And that was very challenging. We almost lost our one of our business. And that was another pivotal moment where we realized we don't, we don't want to rely on external marketing channels anymore. Uh, most of our marketing efforts were relying on Facebook ads. And we, we really wanted to, to find other avenues that could help us, you know, own our own audiences and build sustainable growth. 
So these were the two the two main reasons behind Carloop. And last year we saw this gap in the SMS space, which which was the lack of human touch, the lack of the human element. Most of the tools uh, even now are fully automated. They are becoming, you know, similar to chatbots. People are just talking to either no one is replying to them or they are talking to to automation. And yeah, this is. Uh, this is how we saw the conversational gap in the market, and this is how Carlo came to life. Mm -hmm. And why and where are you different um, against this um, automation tools and chatbots? Where do you see the differentiation? Yeah, so um, if you if you look at the other as SMS players, if we take the other SMS players, they all have great products. Mm -hmm. but they are a completely different category. They are SMS automation tools and you can essentially build a ch chatbot which replies based on scenarios. But if the customers, uh, uh, customer will ask something that's out of script or would need like a much more personalized, you know, uh, assistance, they will be lost. They will just mm -hmm. churn because they would, will not receive that. An automation cannot do that. And Carlop is everything at Carlop is conversational. We have actual humans that uh, you know engage with shoppers in real time, and it solves the same problem but in a different way, because your customers can actually have a conversation that is relevant to their needs, and that um, there are no dead ends, and provides a much better user experience and therefore results. And for this conversation, um, the shop owner or the team of the shop owner needs to jump in, or is this also a service? It's a done for your service. Yeah. As of today, yeah. So you, as a provider of Cardloop, um, are doing the chats as real humans with the end customers of the store owners that work with you. Yes, 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 That's and the really best. Nice. Yeah, one of the best parts of having real humans handle those customer interaction is the fact that they can solve almost 80 to 90 percent of the issues. And that also reduces the support costs of the merit of the brand. It also reduces, you know, things as refunds, churned customers, uh, increases loyalty, increases trust and basically turns turns visitors into loyal, uh, loyal customers, loyal advocates. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, I have seen that you cover 24-7 um, support. So this is really um, a, a very high promise. Uh, so you're um, all over the world um, with your ch uh, chat services, actually. Um, how did you get there? So um, how, how was it possible for you to, to scale with a 24-7 team as a startup? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we started with with four, four countries at Carloop, the English speaking countries. So US, UK, Canada, and Australia. And our, our, our experts are available 24 seven, but at Carloop, we have a very important policy, which is, um, is called quiet hours. So we will not text customers during their quiet hours, which for example, is the middle of the night. So we have this uh, default period, which is 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. So we will not text customers in that uh, in that time frame. So they basically are available during the the daytime of the of the subscribers and the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, how many people do you have in the support team already? So on the Expert side, I would say we have eight or nine, mm -hmm. and nice. yeah, and uh, and two managers. And um, are they working from home or are they working in an office? So especially in times during yeah. Corona. <laughs> yeah. So every uh, every every member at Carlo is working fully remotely. We are a fully remote company. Okay, that's cool, um, and. What are sort of typical questions that you that the com the customer comes comes to you? So the the end users. What what are the typical problems that you see every other day? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. So, for example, I I'm running a bunch of customer interviews uh, on a weekly basis, and 
some of the, I always ask our customers, okay, what, what were the biggest challenges before joining Carlo? What were you trying to solve? Um, and one of the, the biggest issues is something that's very relatable to how Carlo was born. The fact that, um, Merchants saw uh, uh, an increasing cost by by relying on on paid advertising only, and that was not sustainable. So they wanted to find different avenues, you know, different marketing channels, and build a holistic strategy. They also wanted to find channels which would bring them faster results because. Uh, they felt like with email, you know, not everyone is uh, is checking their email like several times a day, but they're always on their phones. So they wanted also faster results. They wanted to connect with their customers um, on a on a deeper level. They wanted to humanize the entire customer experience. So these are some of the the challenges. And of course, you know the. Everyone is struggling with abandoned cards. Everyone wants to recover as many abandoned cards as possible and increase their life, lifetime value, average order value and uh, retention. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, what's your opinion? What, what are the most common mistakes that merchants uh, should stop um, when, when it comes to customer support? Oh, when it comes to, to customer support, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, should this question, should my answer be related to SMS or to customer support overall? I think overall is, is All right. uh, because it's actually SMS. Yes. It's one thing on, or one topic. Um, but I think, um, in, in general, um, merchants are often not used to support at all. And yeah. I think it, it might be helpful for our listeners to, to know what are the common mistakes that should be stopped when it comes to customer support. It can be literally everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I believe that um, most brands treat still treat customer support as a nice to have, and they don't treat it as a, as a revenue center. So but if, if they would provide, you know, excep exceptional customer support, it not only would become their one of their competitive advantages, but also it would help with everything, you know, like um, converting customers, uh, creating memorable experiences, uh, increasing their lifetime value, uh, retaining customers, uh, building that trust and building that community. And I think... Um, one of the biggest mistakes related to customer support, and this applies to, you know, all communication channels, not just SMS, is they do not treat that uh, that channel or that, let's say, strategy as an opportunity to, to understand their shoppers better, to find out, you know, who their shoppers are, what they need, uh, what their expectations are, uh, why they opted in for, let's say, email marketing or SMS and they usually just want to to close those tickets, those support tickets as fast as possible without without actually acknowledging uh, the the why behind behind that ticket, like the the why of the of the shopper or the or the customer. And yeah, that's why that's why some of them, you know, are complaining of you know seeing uh, their results decreasing or yeah, their their shoppers. Uh, not really sticking with them, not not uh, and not retaining them. And I believe that when a shopper, you know, comes to you and comes to you with a concern or an issue, you should always address that that concern, not directly try to to push a sale. And uh, if you think about it, no one will become a customer if their concerns are not addressed. And uh, I believe this is where customer support comes in and it should be one of the most important channels. And one of the, the, another mistake that is related to customer support that I see on a lot of websites, for example, is I find it very difficult to get in touch with that brand. I cannot find an email address. There's no live chat. There's no SMS support. There's nothing. So that it's, it's one of the biggest mistakes, just making it hard for your uh, shoppers or customers to get in touch with you. And also maybe taking like one or two or three days to reply to their, to their email. So that's, that's a huge mistake. 
Yeah, absolutely. I fully need to agree to both of what you said. Um, and um, especially here in Europe, we are forced to have an impress on the page. So when you go to an European shopping cart, you always have at the bottom something like impress. And then uh, uh, in the impress, you always need to have the contact data. So there needs to be a phone number. We are forced to do that. Um, and, and, and this makes it um, easier for um, Europeans to find a contact um, of a web store, but you're absolutely right. Um, when when you look uh, worldwide and you come to a web shop um, or a website, you don't see contact details. And I think um, also what you said is absolutely the truth. Uh, brands don't think good about support. They make it hard to reach the support, although it's so important and it is a revenue channel. It's like um, email marketing. If you have a good support, it can just look at the big players here, like Amazon. The customer support is insane. Yeah. So um, yeah. And 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 it works. So customer centric, customer first. It's not always about the price or the design of a Shopify store or a web store. Um, it's it's especially about how can people be in touch with real people. How can I get help if there is something? Of course. A support request often is a request that is um, a problem that needs to be resolved. But if the problem is being resolved fast and uncomplicated, the customer is happy and the customer will come back. And with a service like yours, I think even small shoppers or small shop owners are able to start with... Um, text-based support or SMS-based support, which is really great. And this leads me to the pricing tiers you have. So you have three, three main pricing tiers, Essential Growth and Pro. Um, and I would be interested in what kind of research did you do to come up with this pricing? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So we, when we started and decided to go with a performance-based model, we we talked with uh, with a bunch of merchants and e-commerce operators, and if you look at, for example, the the essential the essential plan, it's a risk free plan because it's you know it's uh, zero dollars per month, and you only uh, we only get that revenue share once the merchant actually starts becoming successful. So we will not be successful unless the merchant is successful. We put we put you know the merchant. Um, on a, let's say we put their success uh, above ours. So that's the, 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 the most important thing for us. And they can just start, you know, seeing if, you know, this channel, this approach is, is a good fit for them, how their audience responds to this kind of approach. And they just can test it risk-free. So, yeah, I, I think, I think it's, uh, we're, of course, we, we don't have the, the the magic formula yet mm -hmm. every every merchant prefers uh, a different kind of pricing structure but from you know our customer interviews and the validation that we've done uh, in the in the past years this is uh, the best option that we found so far that it's uh, beneficial for both parties yeah absolutely it's it's Great to hear that. Yes, pricing is always a bit hard. Uh, I know it from a lot of uh, SaaS projects and e-commerce projects um, where, where the pricing thing really takes ages once uh, until you have the, the right the right pattern for it. Now you are also partnered with uh, various technologies and uh, agency partners. Um, what do you look in for um, a partner? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I would say we always start partnerships uh, or you know discussions with potential partners by just building that relationship and trust. I feel that that's the most important thing. The fact that you know um, whenever there are opportunities uh, related either to our customer base, every single party customer base or co-marketing opportunities and so on. We know where, where to reach out, uh, who to reach out to and uh, maybe who to recommend because 
uh, we, we trust uh, each other's services and solutions. So mostly I would say we're looking for partners that believe in our product and believe in our mission and that support us and vice versa. Mm, got it. Um, Lisa, you had your own web store, the Active for DTC brand. Um, what was the biggest lesson you have learned during that time? Hmm. Yeah, I was, when I started, I was uh, a total newbie. I didn't know anything. Uh, I just, you know, learn by doing. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah, if I were to, to start again, let's say to launch uh, another brand, I would say the most important, I mean, it's similar to, to if I were to, to start uh another company again right now from scratch. I believe people are your most, I mean, the right people are your most important asset, the people you bring into your company. And then um, I would say, yeah, in terms of the relationship with your, with your customer or with your audience, just, I would, I think I would, I would build a community from the very beginning. I would build a community around my brand from the very beginning. And I will try to build that trust and provide exceptional customer support. And yeah, the also be very focused on the quality of, of my products mm -hmm. and not try to, yeah, not try to over deliver. Maybe I would just start with one product because Uh, when I started, I wanted to have as many products as possible to offer a wider variety because I thought that if I had a wider variety of products, I can reach uh, a wider audience. But it's not it's not that I I, I think the the more niche you are uh, when you're starting, the better chances of success and it's you know very interesting faster approach. growth you have. Yeah, it's a very interesting approach, and I hear it quite often. Um, and I see it quite often uh, that that people are trying to to uh, to have more and more products and try to get um, more and more people on the website to 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 purchase those those different kind of products. But it's very hard to target them. So you spend a lot of money yeah. in advertising um, instead of focusing on a specific niche or a specific product type. Um, I think people nowadays. Um, come to a web shop and if it's very specialized, it's more likely that they buy than if the web shop has too many products. Yeah, true, true. Other than that, it's a marketplace. So when you want to go to a marketplace, you, you will go to a marketplace. So there are a lot of market, beside Amazon, there are a lot of marketplaces out there and, 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 and a lot of people are per purchasing on a marketplace because of the variety of the, of the products and, and, and having a niche is... It's so really something that might help um, help you grow in e-commerce. And then you can go and build out the next niche. Yeah. And I think also having a mission uh, and something you actually as a brand you stand up for um, will will make your audience relate to, to you even more. Uh, and that's why I believe, you know, building a community from the very beginning and going very niche have has higher chances of uh yeah of, of success and really making an impact yeah absolutely um let's talk a bit about automation um does automation play a role in your operations in your company Uh, do you mean in terms of um, the conversations, in terms of the functionalities of the platform or inside of the organization? Uh, in general, I would say. So mm, how important yeah. is automation for you, um, for your software, for your tools? Do you need any mm -hmm. integrations uh, to work with um, Cardloop or is it just um, something that you can do by With it, visiting and browsing the website, and and if so, do you have any other automations in play that you use for your company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Carloop is uh, doesn't require any other integrations in order to to be launched. You know, in order to start your SMS strategy with Carloop, you just have to go on the Shopify App Store. It's a one-click installation. Merchants can do it themselves. It's very easy. 
uh, you go through an onboarding process, which just takes a couple of minutes. We make sure, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're following our compliance guidelines. You are optimizing your checkout page, you're optimizing your privacy policy and so on. Then, um, you just choose a brand personality because we have multiple brand personality. We want to make sure we interact with uh, with the brand's customers uh, through their brand's voice, through their tone of voice, and through their personality. And that's pretty much it. So it's very easy to install Carlo and and um, make make it live in uh, a couple of minutes. And in terms of um, automation. When we, when, we, when we talk about the, the actual conversation and what happens inside of a car loop, around right now, around 30% is automated. So, you know, just we, depending on the merchant's needs, we adjust the initial message that goes out. That if we take, for example, the car, the car recovery flow. So that can be customizable. Some merchants want to provide a discount from the very beginning. Some merchants want to just provide help. Some merchants want to, you know, change, customize the initial message that, that, that gets triggered. So that one, once it's customized, is, is, uh, is going out automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, after after shoppers abandon their carts and of course opt in for uh, for uh, SMS marketing. But other than that, it's uh, you know all humans. Uh, it's real time uh, interaction. And when it comes to our company, we've uh, we've learned so much in the past in the past year, and we're we've started. Uh, we've started to automate a lot of processes, internal processes, you know, related to customer success, related to marketing, sales, and mm. so on. And this is a, a, a work in, it's a constant, uh, constant work in progress. Oh, it's always, it's always. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Lisa, you know that last question for the day, who has taught you the most about e-commerce in your career? Oh my God. I think myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without any modesty. Yeah. Google. I believe. Yeah. It's Google I believe. Again. Uh, learning just by doing. Learning by doing. This is yeah. the best approach. Yeah. It's really, it's really great. And if you're really going to deep in, 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 in something um, and, and use the search engines, forums, and all this kind of stuff, it's, um, it's always a, a great learning. Adding some webinars on top of successful store managers, and you are there. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Lisa. It's really um, a great service that you offer. I like the approach um, that um, you should not hide yourself. Um, if you have a web store, make it easy for users to reach you, make it easy for users to get in touch, to send you the queries in general in support. And when it comes to SMS marketing, the personal touch is, I think, really important. Uh, we nowadays have so many machines uh, doing some stuff. And especially when it's a smaller web shop or a, a, um, an, an SMB, um, you, you want that personal touch. You don't want to talk to a machine. You have that machines uh, in when you're booking a flight, when you when you have really enterprise customers, then you are used to that. But when you want to have real personal touch, real personal approach, you're going to an SMB shop um, or of a smaller company, and then you expect uh, a, a human on the other hand. And I really like that approach. Thank you very much for your time. And Thank you very much, Norbert. Great job and good luck with Cardo. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that's it for this episode of the Ecom Ops Podcast. If you enjoyed listening and would like us to find and interview more e-commerce operations experts, please search for Ecom Ops Podcast in your favorite podcast listening app and then subscribe, rate, and review. Until next time. 